It takes less than 0.4 amps to kill the average adult. I guess they haven't uh, tested enough children to get a reliable average. But why find out at your house? Electrical shocks are interesting. A lot of people get them and survive, but it depends on how you get them. The most lethal are hand-to-hand -hand because the current goes right past your heart. In actual fact, it's hard to say who can stand how much current and for how long and under what circumstances. But the average household circuit has got more than 50 times the required current to kill somebody before the fuse blows. That's why these are getting popular. They're mandatory in swimming pool installations for the plugs and the lights. And they really ought to be in kitchens, bathrooms, and laundry rooms, too. They're ground fault circuit interrupters. And the trick is to pass normal load currents and yet trip if a human being's being shocked. How they work needs a diagram. A diagram. In a normal circuit, current flows through that black wire, the hot one, through the load, and then back through the white one, the neutral. For a lot of reasons, the neutral is grounded at the fuse box, either via your plumbing or, or with a rod stuck in the ground. Now, if you grab on here and here, you're going to get zapped and nothing can prevent it. What the ground fault circuit interrupter protects against is being zapped between the hot and another ground. The sensor is a balanced thing that is always comparing the current in the neutral with the current in the hot. No matter how big the load is, that current ought to be exactly the same. If a human gets in the way between the hot and another ground, there'll be a teeny bit more current in the hot, in the hot than there is in the neutral, and the thing trips. Ground fault circuit interrupters are, are very sensitive, and they trip at about five thousandths of an amp. But they don't limit the current through you. They limit the duration of the current through you. So don't test them with your body. They can save you, but there's no need to fool around. Watch this amazing demonstration. Here's a lady in a defective toaster. It's plugged into a normal circuit breaker thing. Watch what happens when she touches the toaster. Eek! Now, watch what happens when you have the ground fault circuit interrupter in, in the circuit. Trip. Well, I can see you want one. The best place for it is in your circuit breaker box as a circuit breaker. But, as Roger Miller said, you can't roller skate in a buffalo herd, and you can't install a ground fault circuit interrupter circuit breaker in a fuse box. But you can be happy if you want to. The receptacle kind not only give protection at the receptacle, but they protect downstream receptacles as well. At the point, receptacles wear out and break, and the company representative pointed out that this is a pretty expensive receptacle. Since they can protect downstream receptacles, I asked them if it would be okay to install it in a double box with an ordinary receptacle and then not use the ground fault circuit interrupter side. He said, that seems like a good idea. Another drawback, these things are famous for so-called nuisance tripping. I quote the company brochure. Anytime a circuit breaker trips, it's giving important information about an actual or potentially dangerous condition needing correction. That's not what I'd call a nuisance.